Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Crystal. I'm with Voltaic Systems. We are a seven-person self-funded startup based in Brooklyn. And today I'm going to talk about portable power and wearable tech. And one of the great things about this company is we have some really great customers. This is David Fletcher. He's an Australian, um, and he's extremely passionate about cycling. And like a lot of people who are passionate about things, he's documenting his complete experiences as he travels. And that translates into a, a lot of photography and a lot of video. Um, here he's walking through the streets of Ladakh, which is um, kind of like the Indian Himalayas. And of course, what David is doing is he's also publishing. So he's about to take a bicycling ride up over a 5,000 meter pass, which is one of the highest roads in the world. And the day before, he's posting on Facebook. Um, as he you know, ascends to the top of the peak, he takes his picture. And as soon as he gets a cell phone signal, that's getting published to Instagram. And the issue here is there's a cel cellular network that's very pervasive around the world, but the power network isn't. So the things that he's using to document his experience are ranging uh, power number of hours from 10 hours down to 20 minutes. And so this is where Voltaic Systems comes in. We create complete systems that power, um, that generate power, store the power, and allow people to um, power all their devices and capture moments that they wouldn't uh, otherwise be able to capture. So I'm going to show, I'm going to pass around a couple of products. Um, our first product was a solar backpack. This is the upgraded version, which is able to, the first one charged you know, small Nokia phones. This now charges laptops. This is the Fuse 6W, which is designed to attach onto your own backpack or bicycle, um, or it can be detached, and it's like a, a standalone tablet case. And then finally, this is just one of our panels. You're going to see how light it is. It's super strong. You won't be able to break it. It's also waterproof. Are you challenging us to break it? You can try. <laughs> yeah. And so if we go back to uh, David here. David's now um, kind of in the shadow of the Indian Himalayas here. He's using our Fuse 10W to power up all his devices. And at the end of this experience, he's going to go home and create a really nice edited video of his bicycle ride um, across his pass. And he's going to publish it on his site. And what's exciting for me and exciting for us as a company is that we're um, enabling people like David, and we have lots of great Davids all around the world, to capture and share experiences that they wouldn't have been able to power um, without our systems. And so when we think about you know, where we are now, where we're, where we're looking forward with um, wearable tech, you know, the first thing we, we know is that 50% of our sales are international, and the market for power is global, and it's just going to be growing. So these are aid agencies. It's multinational corporations who have people, you know, employees far flung all over the world, and they want to know exactly what they're doing um, at kind of all moments of the day. Uh, and there's no power for those devices. It's journalists. It's Peace Corps people. Um, so it's, it's, really, it's really a great market. Um, the second is in the US and other developed countries, I think outdoor enthusiasts are still going to are, are lead users and are kind of, I guess, hotspot is what they mentioned earlier. Uh, those people are spending 24 hours, multiple days outside, and they're facing the biggest constraints from power. We also um, like what well, we, we're calling remote tech, which is all the technology that goes into wearable tech. So low-cost sensors, communications between sensors um, and the web, rapid prototyping tools. That's being used to generate um, equipment that's, this is a um, water level measuring system in the middle of a river in Tanzania that's powered by that panel that I just gave you. It's about this big. And it's publishing on a live continuous basis the water level on this river in Tanzania. And so we see sensors kind of exploding all over the world and being pow powered by relatively small panels. And then as designers, what we're trying to do is make products that are you know, highly functional, um, that work well, that say good things about solar, um, but also um, look good and are easy to wear. So we're looking at as soon as stuff comes out of the lab that is higher efficiency cells, meaning more power and less space, or um, flexible form factors so we can design um, better looking products, um, we're always going to be Trying, keeping our eye out for that and integrating it into ours. So if anyone needs power, 
She's great. She's a Dutch explorer that's been going around um, deserts for the last 25 years. Great. Which part of it's yours? Are you making the panels? Are you a marketing company? Where does it all fit together? We are um, we're sp specking out all the components. So the panel, everything, kind of how the panel is designed, what the radius of the corner is, where the tape goes on to cover the sol solder is all us. Um, and there's lots of things that we did from a design perspective. Uh, but there's a third party. We're buying cells, solar cells from Bosch. Um, and they're getting manufactured into panels by a manufacturer. And so so t t tell me historically, and maybe it helps us look into the future in terms of efficiency. Mm -hmm. Where were these panels in terms of output capability five years ago? Yep. And where will they be five years from now? They're, they were 17% five years ago, and they're 19% now. When you, uh, so not much. In t when you say 17% of? 17% of the energy that's hitting the panel okay. gets converted into electricity. Okay. And then, so it's gone up from 17% to, I mean, there are 20%, but it's like we're getting 19% on our average cells of the energy. So there's a very small increase. But what has increased is, like, for example, LED lighting. LEDs have gotten a lot more powerful per amount of energy that's going into. Phones have gotten extremely powerful. Um, so we're not seeing efficiency in the, in the cells themselves. We're seeing efficiency in the things that need power from them. That's correct. And we keep hoping that the cells themselves will get more and efficient. You're not, and, well. and that's not what you mean to do. You're, you're, you're betting on the uses of it, the marketing of it, and the raw tech to get it from 17, 19 to 25 is someone else's. It's absolutely. Yeah, so someone we're, else is sure. we're product designers, we're marketers, we're distributors. Got it. So as a seven-person mm -hmm. company, I mean, mm -hmm. so you're, you're, produ you're manufacturing and you're marketing. Um, Self-funded, mm -hmm. um, profitable. Yes. I mean, so I pay taxes on it every year. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. I mean, not we're not you know we're not retiring off it, but um, yeah, it's, we we've built it so that it is profitable. It's running. You know, we're generating. We're selling for stuff for more than it costs us, right. and we're you know we're investing that fairly cautiously. So is there it. is there a breakthrough? As you know, as you take a look at GoPros, where you know when you yeah. first saw me, you said, "Well, who needs another camera?" and it became a multi-billion-dollar business. Do you have the chance to break through and become a really big business, or by the time you get to some place, then Samsung's going to come in with their version and crush you. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, GoPro is a very special case. There's lots of kind of cameras that yeah. didn't make it. You know, I'd like to be it, and I think being a self-funded company allows us to take longer-term views. And so that I think if we were funded very early on, on our first products, we might have blown it, and then we were don't don't exist. But now we have kind of the time, I think, to get it right. Hard, to, hard to get funded, or didn't want the money. <coughs> we didn't want the money. Okay, and if you if someone if someone dropped ten million dollars on you now, would that be a good thing? We weren't getting offered ten million. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think if if we could, we're always looking for the way to scale the business, and if we could figure that out, then yes, we're going to take funding. Okay. Um, and until we kind of really kind of figure out where that point is where we can step on the gas and make it really grow, then. How does it do in, in weather? So I saw a desert that works well. I, got, I skied this weekend. My phone yeah. crapped out by 3 o'clock <laughs> yeah, because the exactly. battery was cold. Right. What, what does this stuff do in terms of temperature? So lower temperature improves the performance of the panel, so by a lot. Um, so higher temperature actually over 25 degrees Celsius drops a little bit. Okay. Uh, batteries tend to perform less well, as you know. But it, the panels kind of can take water, rain, dropping from seven-story buildings. The... Um, but it doesn't, like today, it wouldn't generate much power. That's why we have batteries inside of each. Right. So there's a storage device that when it's rainy or you're inside, you can still use the device. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>